There is one great work in, in many areas, particularly at this interface between probability and probability, and one would nice to see after 25 years when we are still much still alive, and I think very opportunity to work with that in the past. So uh, what I was talking about is not even related to take this in any way, but it's there is an aspect of the building. So what I was talking about is that in the time in which we live, we make the Jordan domain these. And we consider a, a planar cool of gas restricted to this domain. So they are then charges sitting in, in this domain. Interacting with the logarithmic potentials. And then we can write the transition function for this. So the end particle is the domain. So the partition function is just that we integrate to the domain and we take this logarithmic interaction between character particles and the sum over all. So, and then we integrate with respect to area measurement. So, 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 this is area measurement. So, this object that we back to understand that how it behaves and goes to infinity and how this reflects in some way, hopefully, some aspects of the geometry of this. So, in general, you could have an inverse temperature beta here, and in this case, our beta is equal to two. And then, you know, this we can also write this as the on the moment that determinant squared, then. And as many of you would know by the standard formula here, this, this can be. Written as the determinant. This is the determinant that we have monomials here, particularly a minus one, p bar, the n minus one, and this is an n by n determinant. So typically, when you see this, you think that what you should do is to understand the standard. The key from a whole from a random matrix theory is, is that you use the whole of the nodes. And then you can write the partition functions as a product of the leading coefficient in the orthonormal for the node. But this is not what I want to do now, because we don't really know much about this for node. That is the problem. But it turns out that there is another approach to this which leads to an exact formula. So, I will consider then the free energy, which is and the log of this. And as I said, we want to think of this as some kind of domain functional. I mean, it depends. The only thing we can change here is the domain. So how, how does it depend? What does it tell us about the domain? Can we, can we so, for example, very regularity of you know, the boundary curve. We have a bound. This is bounded by the Jordan domain. It's bounded by a Jordan curve. So we can note that that's, that is place the origin here. In, we can always move this, but we can also rescale it. It's clear from this that it's trivial to rescale this. So the size is not really an important. Doesn't say anything about that. We can assume that, that the capacity, the logarithmic capacity of this domain is equal to one just by this case. So the logarithmic capacity comes in naturally. So the maximal value of this will be exactly the square time of capacity of the asymptotic. That's a sort of the dominant part which we take away. So the way to think about it is, there are two sort of formal maps naturally associated with this. 
the node is perhaps it is Romanian now. B will have the origin here. You can take a, a, a let's say B star with a complement here. And then we have also the unit disk here. And I write this complement at E star. So then there is there is one conformal map that will map from the inside here to the inside there, and there is another map from the outside here, which I call E. These are well-known objects, and these are sort of the players that come into the analog. So we have G then from why would you use the same pet for G if you want to map the exteriors? But there is actually there are sort of two conformal maps. One one which takes the interior here to the interior, and one which takes the exterior to this. They are not trivially related. It's not just that you extend. So, so this is only defined inside up to the boundary here. If it, and, and then Similarly, so there is a non trivial connection between this kind of form of welding, how we relate this to it. So, so we both come in a different way. Actually, from the point of view of, of this problem, the external map is sort of the natural thing, the first thing, because we know that this the dominant part, we should expect this to be distributed according to the if you let, let's say this one, if I took this on the on the curve step or at the about in the whole region, then they will distribute themselves according to equilibrium mesh. And this equilibrium mesh is preserved by the output. The output that comes in in a way in more natural. Right? But if, now we're in the interior, right? so we have to think about that all. That's why we also want to use this F. So these are, are nor normalized. So these start like like Z plus G naught plus G minus one C minus. The condition here is one is exactly this condition here. And then we also we can also normalize and put the topology inside here. So this is just a normalized explanation. The image of G is B star. Yes. Yes, sorry. I, I, I interrupted myself. So this, and now we have F. Okay, okay so these, these are two players. Now, the Gramsci coefficients or Gramsci operators we mentioned in that this is sort of like these are univalent functions there is a classical object associated with this which is called of the Gramsci coefficient. So I look at at this see why you should look at this thing is not sort of immediate but it comes in naturally in this problem. So you, you take this and you expand this sort of not like the exterior map, we can look at this close sort of around infinity. So we expand it in inverse powers. So, so this has an expansion like this. And these are called the moon speed. Coefficient. And then they have been, there are lots of things written about, but particularly in connection with, with univalent functions, but also in other contexts. So we can, turns out to be good not just to look at these, but to multiply this by the square root of KL. And then we look at sort of the operate from this on the little L2 space, which has these. <laughs> as elements. So this, this is an operator from L2 of C plus to itself, or the goons the operator.
So now I, with this object, I can formulate, give you a formula for this object in terms of this D. There is a proposition that says that the log free energy then of this partition function that we're interested in is equal to the partition function for the unit is plus the Fredholm determinant. So I take this B, this is Brunsky operator here. P star and PN is just the projection to the n first rows and columns, right? So this is you think this is an n by n matrix, so this is a finite. So this so this n by n, so I write it like this, you can think about it as a third on the term on the n two plus, but it's really a finite term. This is my identity. So this, this is, I mean with Partition things written as a thread on determinant is things we are used to, and that's a good thing. Right? <laughs> 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 so, so, in that sense, there is some kind of what we would think of as integrability, right? have something to work with. Of course, it's not an easy object, right? But just because we have a thread on determinant, you don't automatically know anything as a topic. And this is not in fact an easy object either. Yeah, but it's it's a finite form that can work. So there's no wrong here for those. Yeah, 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 sure. Thank you. So I want so I discovered this formula. It's actually it's it, it's not my formula, it's my formula in the sort of I should say not mine actually. The all what I'm saying now is joined with the Lun, who is also at So I, these objects also been studied in 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 Kashmir. There's there's a paper by Tahtayan and Theo from maybe. 20 years ago, which deals with so called universal Teichmiller space. I won't go into that at all. But if you read at some point in this paper, actually, there is, they don't look at sort of the finite case of this. But for me, if you know determinantal processes, you can easily see what they're doing is this type of computation. You mm -hmm. get this formula. They're interested really just in the video here and on the infinity. So I will come to that. So, so it actually comes from Takwayan and things. So, but let me, as I say, I'm not using orthogonal polynomials. But there's another class of polynomials called Faber polynomials, which are sort of also associated with this region. So, so this is a very classical thing. I mean, they appeared at about the same time as Senko started the orthogonal polynomials of, for this kind of problem. Orthogonal polynomials with respect to area measuring the plane goes back to the second a little more than 100 years ago. And about the same time, Farber introduced another class of polynomials called Farber polynomials, which come from this external map. You, you take this external map, you take some W, then to the exterior also of the domain, and then you can expand this in a series in the inverse powers. It turns out that this is actually a polynomial, it's not immediately obvious from the definitions of PK W is WK plus so it's polynomial of the PK. No assumption from here, or it's something. No, there's really no assumption here. This is quite, I mean, these, these maps exist in very general. So it is an analytic function, right? So, so this is very general. It's the type of G that's 
if this gap is used. If I have there is a use in the normalization, otherwise you would have some risk. Yes. So both both G and F come from the B1 map. So what do we want to do? We want to move this object here to, or rather this determinant here to the unit disk instead. What is good is not to use PK, but actually the derivative. So we want to take the derivative, and then I want to use the, this inner interior mapping function to move the problem from T to the unit disk. I want to take this composition here. And these you can also these you can expand. This is I mean this is an analytic function in the unit disk, right? I and mean, this is for normals, you can expand this. So this this has some series of expansion. So it will depend on, on K and on when you expand in the analysis, you have, and you have some conditions. Now it turns out, and this is this is something which goes back to Bernard <clears throat> Schiffer in the 50s, but it's also re-derived in this paper and under weaker conditions by Tachayan and he was that there is a relation between the operator with these elements and B. So I'm just getting there. I mean, not high, there are a lot of things, of course, you have to work out the machine, which I'm not telling you. That would be much more time, but there is a relation between it. So C C star is the identity minus P. This is something you can prove. So with these ingredients now, we can use the same idea that you would usually use to replace these monomials in suitable polynomials. Right, to get a better formula for that. But mm -hmm. let's take let's call them alpha. Maybe I call them alpha and D. You take them to be one over the square root of my k and the derivative. So this, 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 I would have said it looks like. Square root of k over pi is e to the k minus one and so on. So now we take this determinant so it's k minus one plus k minus one. And then we do the usual row and column operations. And then we have to sort of compensate for this is exactly which gives you pi to the n over n factorial. And then the determinant like this. And now we move this. So this is exactly, which is easy to compute, right? The, the partition function for the unit disk. So we get the partition function for the unit disk. And then, then we move this now to the unit disk. Right, so. This is conjugation, right? So these f primes just come from, come from the change of the area. And now, let me know. Now, in here, I mean, alpha k was in terms of this, and pk had this expansion in this. So it's, it's an easy computation now using the orthogonality of the monomials on the unit disk. 
shows that this is it is exactly now the determinant or for the location function the unit is kind of the determinant of of e in stuff. Or rather Pn because it's a finite term. And now via this relation, this is now what I what we stated now in, in the in the theory. Well, this was a sketch, but there, there is a sort of a nat, an analog of what we usually see on a problem of polynomials, but it's using a different type of polynomials to solve it. But now, you see, with this, I can immediately say some things about the asymptotics in our position function. Right? So we get the theory. In so what happens when n goes to infinity? Well, we just we divide, look at the quotient of these these addition functions. That is just how we stay. Because if d is a Hilbert Schmidt operator, then b v star is a trace class operator, and this will convert. So we get following thing if d is a Hilbert operator then the limit then and go to infinity of the logarithm of the quotient of these addition functions in this logarithm of this trade-off determinant. And this is an object that has appeared in other contexts also. Like, why does one tell, well, or something for the Lerner energy of the boundary term? This has appeared in, so I'll refer you to papers here or by because I don't have time to say by the evening one, I work a lot of this recently. So they, they appear, for example, as a large deviation rate function in SLE when you have the parameter kappa go to zero. So it's, it's an interesting object <coughs> which appears in many contexts. So, and there's also, a so, I mean, the, the geometry sits in the boundary, right? So there is a Certain class of curves for which this is actually fine. But B is, is a Hilbert Schmidt operator. This is a class of curves that I believe introduced. The name comes from, from this work, I think, by Dr. That was why Peterson brought this up. There are many other more than 20 different characterizations of these curves. There's a paper by Chris Fisher, which is interesting. So one of them is that the is a Hilbert Schmidt operator, which is not technical, but there are other, other definitions. For example, yeah, but this, is, this is in L2, and the is also a There are many, many ways of characterizing these curves. So what I was interested in, that should come now because of the time of abstract, was that what happens if it's not quite features? So then, then the verb and the would be infinite. But so how would it? But so this means that this object will actually diverge. But how would it diverge? Will this tell me something about the geometry? So it's the, sort of the basic case in a way for how it how it of a domain which is not by Peterson is something like a polygon or we can, 
let me take a domain with something like this. I have some corners. So this is that's an angle alpha one pi, alpha two pi, alpha three pi, and so on. Alpha four. And I think that these are analytic. Or you can think of a polygon. This is not the wild beta search. What the search? Boundary curve. I have something like this. So what happens then? Well, so with with the and we have the following theory: that the limit that n goes to infinity of, and it will actually then go to like no gap. Can prove is that we look at the quotient of partition functions of log n and divide by log n. That this limit can be computed in one six in the sum p over to one to m of alpha p. Uh, so we saw these two interior angles minus. So. Okay, you get. You can see how you could try. Um, I will not really have time to say it's not, but you, you can see. I mean, if you look at the well, we have this formula, right? That this P was this determinant. Rather the log. Of this, so, so I mean, as to none of us know, you can expand this in phases. So that's a J from one to infinity, one of the J, the traits of and P and P, and P star and P. J, and you try to understand these traits. So this is, of course, I mean, we don't really know so much, but we can relate this to the exterior map, and the exterior map of something like this, you can say, if you think of a polygon, it's an explicit thing, right? It is, if you may have read about it some time, it's like this also. So there is something you can start to work with, it's trying to understand the components. It's not so... First, when you see this, you hope that okay, maybe the first train is like log n and the other things are bound. That's a good thing. I think you heard some difficulties like this earlier. But and actually, every trace here is of order log n. So you have to understand the whole and then somehow understand how you can extract the total contribution. If you subtract off log n times the right side, that you're kind of neutralizing that divergence, do you recover the residual of the That's a great question. I hope, yes, I don't know what the answer should be. I don't even have a conjecture. I don't think there is one. I can maybe comment a bit about that. that. That's an interesting thing. Let me at the end now comment a bit about, about this thing. I mean, you get something, but actually this is something this is something that has appeared before. It's not the, so, so but I, I'll end the talk by, I will not have time to say more about this. The idea is that you somehow extract the leading asymptotics of this. You write a contouring, double contouring integral formula for this based on this formula here. You extract the, the dominant part, which comes, comes from the contribution of the corners. And the corners for in a conformal map like this have a sort of a known behavior, which eventually the many computations leads to this result. So, but let me not go into that. So if we look at this their energy this can also be related for efficiently regular curve, it can be related to, to determinants of Laplacian. 
which is sort of a, another field here. So, so there is a formula if you take the Lerman energy, it's minus 12, the logarithm, and then you have the determinant of the Laplacian on a domain doesn't really make sense, but there's something called the Zeta regular ones. Determinants. So let me write this like this, and it's on minus the Laplacian of the domain. Do you think of the domain as sitting now on the sphere? So then you can take the, the this Laplacian also of the complement on the sphere. They are both bounded things. So these things can be defined, and then there is a similar normalization to what we see here that you take these also from for, for the um, unit disk and its complex. This only works you need to prove this you have to assume that gamma is something like C3 sufficiently smooth. So you cannot apply it to this situation. But this type, but behind the definition here, which I will not write now, of this theta regularized determinant, you have <coughs> you have heat traces of heat traces. So if you do take the trace of the minus. Of, of the Laplace and on the domain D. Yeah. This is that just sum e to the minus lambda j and t, j will be to infinity. And this, this is an object that we must study I mean, in order to understand the Laplace eigenvalues and the theta that's about the bonus. So this goes so something like the area of the domain divided by four pi t. If we look at this as t goes to t again, minus tells you something about the length. And then there's, there's, a, there's a constant term here, a t. And it, a2 in the same, this, this is related to the Euler characteristic of, of, of this. If you use this more generally, you can have some, some uh, Laplace one operator. So this, this is in the case of a domain, it's just one six. But if you study the domain with corners like this, you get what's called an anomaly. Then. You don't just get it, you get the contribution also from the corners. And this contribution is 1 over 24, and you, you can get that you get exactly this expression. So, so this seems to be something which is a natural. Here it's associated with the eigenvalues of, of, of the Laplacians and how they behave. Here it comes out of this Coulomb gas in the region. So there is no there is no immediate relation. So there is some kind of universality or natural thing about this. It also comes about if you look at discretizations of Laplacians. And if you take the Laplacians, you want to study it on some domain, you do a discretization, take the you can take a determinant, it's like determinant of some matrix, right? And you let the this become finer and finer. You will also have this kind of logarithmic divergences, and this kind of thing again comes up with that point. This can be nice, like if you approximate the disk by a given point. So we need to get the big I mean, I mean, if you took a smooth domain and you started to do things like that, it would not work like this. It wouldn't be continuous because this would, would introduce these kind of logarithmic divergences, but in the end, you don't have that. You have to treat the alpha like one minus one over log n. Very smooth point. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I interpret, I mean, if you what you would typically do if you had a domain, you would introduce some matches. I don't know. That's what I mean. Then you would have some fixed standards. And then you would see these logarithms. Also, I mean, is there a way of at least intuitively sort of seeing what the PN does at the level of the function F? Because you see, the, what, what the, you well, because what I mean is, you see, the F second over F prime, that guy, which you want to be in L2, that guy is going to have one over Z square singularities at these corners with three factors that are precisely alpha yeah, minus no, no. one square. So you basically yeah. get the alpha minus one square, you but can... then you don't get the one over alpha. So do you see the one over alpha somehow from what the projection, the way the projection regular yeah. about this that we're going to Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can, there is another way of doing it. You can also, you can write the, 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 these also in terms as, as essentially you have, you have um, Dirich the energies of, 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 of this, which is the same thing, right? and plus the same thing with G. So, what, and you integrate this over the domain and the complement of the domain. But, so, but if, if you think about this, this would be infinite, and if you plug know, in say it starts to stop and stop, then it would be, but you, if you render it, you can take away a part from the corners. If you see how that diverges, then what you have described, you can, there is some, in, in our paper, there is a short discussion about this, but you can see it when we come to the You can prove that it comes in a very non intuitive In the end, there is some integral of the computer. Get this, which is a normal disease. Okay, I'll stop it. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I just wonder on that theorem if you could do a little experiment where you, you go and put it down on the plane and have the next letter certainly with L, maybe one of the conditions be somewhere. Yeah, the origin, and then at the same time, independently draw the SLE uh, counter factors. And you look at the advantage that is SLE curve captures all the points, but then somehow that formula, if you play it in the right way, would mean that the answer data <laughs> with conditions curve would sort of be invariant on the lead, but it would sort of be a constant in one of the domains. the remains. Well, I don't know. There is there is clarified um, in line which I think is important. What are these measures? Am I measure some of the deviation from the mean circle or a straight line which is of a circle on, on, on the mean We can see what, what is the mean minimal thing minimal bits which actually go two ways in the top of home. So this means you can characterize them somewhere. So for the point that I say this I guess it may be motivated. That I don't actually don't know it. Don't process it about it. You have it comes about as as that was thought deviation rate function. And we want the sort of methodology to be close to a given to a given curve. Like the curve you have some region here and that part. So yeah, maybe you can make sense. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Yeah. 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 Are there exact asymptotics for the ZN of the unit disk? Well, imagine that yeah, well, I think in this, this, it, it, in this case, it, it, you can compute it. It, it, it. It's just this I to be adding over that the tool. That then yeah. Well, the unit is if you can just take my definition, the, the monomials are orthogonal, right? so you have to do it directly. Okay. Or if, if, if you were taking general beta, I don't know. That, that makes it some more harder. That's it. In, in, for this formula, of course, you mentioned the eigenvalues, but there's another way to look at that. I mean, it's the, the hit kernel on the diagonal, right? <laughs> you understand PT of yeah, XX yeah. or ODEX. And and this is how in fact the current comes. 
So is there is there a ground motion coming back on its track here? <laughs> I don't know. If you go right, I think you don't. I mean, it worked for so the integral of the exactly, yes. But most work, most some most that I know of it is that it seems to be somehow go back to this kind of computation of the computer where it retrains like you said, and you have to have some exact training exercise. You start with it now in the 60s, but there is here it comes about not at all in that way. But I don't know. I cannot, I think the computation here is is uninformative. Yes, in those infinity, the density of the point is converging to some solution of some limiting minimization problem. Is it easy to figure out what that is? And then also to use this to prove large deviations for other. I mean, if you mean the Coulomb gas. Yeah, the Coulomb gas itself. Yeah. Actually, they will be very close. They actually, in, in any, if you, can, if you look at it, you can see it's very, very close. All the sort of hyperbolic method. So they are all, all they are very close to the big. So in any finite, in any region, I like think even when I'm the community, they always have a finite. So they, they, the density is like the hyperbolic density. They want to make it in that And essentially, it's somehow true that for the health, in general, people should get the new method with that. And this is not exactly true, but I think also it should come to be true. We've been thinking about, I mean, with a post of me in China and threading, uh, understanding back to this school of gas in terms of this, this is not really much to be For a domain like this, what I would expect is to have a constant next order term, yes, which would. But in, in the case of a uh, yes, uh, the answer is, of course, I really don't know, but I think my guess it would continue that way. But yes, the next step, you would have maybe a very vague, there is some. Not similarity, but some kind of vague analogy with this and Fisher Hartwig as in Tontis for a circuit spectrum. There you also have some of similarities on, on the unit circle, taking rise to this kind of logarithmic divergence, and the next order term contains is a constant. Term. And what comes with what you would suspect is that you get some kind of interaction between the points, and you have some kind of logarithmic interaction, not with these points, but the one that you have to wait for. Somehow I think it behaves similar, but that's a very vague thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's absolutely true. Yeah. Very, this is yeah, it that, that is much closer to, 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 to the one dimension. <laughs> So I think that's why the expansion is different. Yeah, sure, absolutely. 